What do you need to know about the red eye in primary care? We can distill it all down so this patient doesn't go blind when you send them home tonight and say everything's going to be fine. We are going to start the review course Pink Eye Clinic. This is my son, Declan, who's going to be our first patient here and uh, probably about to break the ophthalmoscope. But we've got lined up for you about uh, 10 of the different catering staff right now who are just finalizing, putting out all of your snack for the next break. And all of them, I noticed, they've all got pink eye and lots of goopy, thick, purulent discharge, just like pouring out into your food. So let's try and make a diagnosis for each and every one of these 10 catering staff who are waiting out there for us. Before we do that, if you want to go get your food in advance, if you want to go take a pee, that's totally fine, as long as you know this one slide. If you know what's on this one slide, you're never going to cause serious harm to a patient with pink eye. If a person says their eye hurts, that's a red flag. Pink eye should not be painful. Has anybody here had pink eye before? It's not painful, it's gritty. Raise your hand if you've had pink eye, hands up high if you've had pink eye from like chlamydia or gonorrhea. Yeah, many of you. Many of you, I see, have had this condition. Viral conjunctivitis, so it should be gritty, sandy, irritated, itchy, but should not be painful. So nail your patient down and say, what is it? Is it actually painful? Is it actually pain in the eye? Or is it more pain in the lid? And if they say, no, it's not painful, really reassuring. But if they say, yeah, it's definitely pain in the eye, big red flag. Second red flag, decreased acuity. And we want corrected acuity. Put on your glasses. Just had your vision check last week. Great, put on, put on your glasses. We want to know what your corrected acuity is because if you could see fine this morning with your best possible glasses or not glasses if you don't need them, and then this morning your eye became pink and you can't see it of that eye, that's a bad thing. There's something seriously wrong going on. If they don't have glasses, there's one tool you can use to find out if, what normal acuity is for them. What's that? It's called a pinhole. If, so basically, here's, hear me out, glasses are a conspiracy, Right? Nobody actually needs to buy glasses because you could just go around like this all day long and you could see completely normally. Why are we giving our money to big lenses when we could just be walking around like this all day, right? Are you with me? Silly point, but I'm trying to make the point that once you use your pinhole, hopefully you've got a pinhole device in your clinic, put that on. It's like you put on a pair of glasses for any patient. Their acuity should be normal. If it's not and they got pink eye, big red flag, call opto if it's worse than 20 over 30. And the third one is anisocoria. Anisocoria means one pupil is different size in the affected pink eye. If, one, if the pupils are not the same size, big red flag. So what could those causes possibly be? So our first catering staff comes in, pink eye, contact lens wearer. We're all worried about which bug? Pseudomonas, phenomenal. I'm glad you know that. Why is it that ophthalmologists are terrified of pseudomonas? This patient, patient of mine consented to have her photograph used. She was in for an unrelated issue, and I said, I noticed your eye looks like you've had some, some procedures done, is that right? And she said, yes. She went to emer an emergency department for pink eye, which is a bit unusual. You don't usually go to an emergency department for pink eye. She had no pain. She had no pus coming out of her eye. She's not even a contact lens wearer. The ER doc did a swab, which you're not really supposed to do unless you're looking for chlamydia or gonorrhea or it's a neonate. And then the eMERGE doc had this patient, no red flags, and gave her a moxifloxacin eye drop. Gave her the treatment for pseudomonas before they even had a swab back, which you're not really supposed to do. Swab came back positive for pseudomonas. So she had no red flags, went on the first day, had the right treatment, and still needed seven surgeries in that right eye to try and regain her vision. That's why ophthalmologists are terrified of pseudomonas. They use terms, when you talk about pseudomonas, ophthalmologists use terms like corneal melting. You can lose your cornea in 24 hours or less, so it's a serious thing. If there's any contact lens use, get their hourly moxifloxacin eye drops in. There's a second bug, a real zebra, probably don't need to know it for an exam, but acanthamoeba can also cause problems and infection in your eye if you wear contact lenses. So contact lenses can increase your risk for those two bugs, pseudomonas and acanthamoeba. Our second patient from the catering staff has got goop coming out of their eyes every time they're around cats. Well, do we give them antibiotics for pink eye? No, this is obviously an allergic conjunctivitis. One of five topics has this specifically, which is why we mention it. Don't give them antibiotics, don't call it pink eye, and tell them to use your snowflake mnemonic, go through cues for quit the bad stuff. Quit cats! <laughs> Our third catering staff out there, ooh, they've got perilimbal haze. Now, I used to think this was a really complex thing, like the perilimbal haze, like 
trying to memorize the anatomy and the cornea and the pupil and what's going on here. It's actually really straightforward. If something is red, then that part of the eye is probably inflamed. So the perilimbal haze, what's around that perilimbal region? The center of your eye. You've got your iris, so you, it could be an iritis. You've got your, your cornea, so it could be a corneitis. No, keratitis. Keratitis. And you've got your pupil there, so it could be pupillitis. No, you can't get an infection of the pupil. So iritis or keratitis are possible causes when you see a perilimbal haze, something in that area is red, and so something in that area is inflamed. Our fourth patient comes in. They've been catering. they got goop coming out of... No, they've got halos around lights. they got a severe headache, nausea, vomiting. Headache, nausea, vomiting. You remember Dr. Dillon's lecture from earlier? Earlier, pound criteria. <gasps> is it one-sided headache? Yes, doctor. Is it a pounding? Oh, it's severe. It's, yes, doctor. It's really bad. Nausea, unilateral disabling intensity. He's got all five pound criteria. Diagnosis, migraine? No, this person's got acute angle closure glaucoma. That, so 92% accuracy, pound criteria, you got all five criteria, 92% accuracy for migraine. This person's in that 8%. You got to use your clinical judgment, and there have been medical legal cases where the doctor didn't take off the sunglasses, didn't look at the eye, didn't see the pupil was fixed. It was hazy on the cornea and red eye on one side. They had an acute angle closure glaucoma causing their pink eye. Don't make that mistake. Now, what, how do we diagnose this? The gold standard of diagnosis is you check the intraocular pressure. That's straight from the 105 topics, which is why we measure it. This person needs IV treatment. They need oral treatment. They need eye drop treatment. That's right. They need three routes of treatment to get that pressure down in that affected eye within the hour. Fifth patient from our catering staff comes in, and they got goop coming out of their eye, they got a pink eye, and they're looking in the light, and it hurts again. I used to think this was so confusing. Photophobia, what could be going on here? Well, what happens in the eye when you look in the light? Your pupil goes like this, because your iris goes like this. And so if something is infected, it turns red, and it hurts. And so if it goes like this, and it hurts, Maybe something in that part of the eye is affected. It's probably an iritis. So there is a differential diagnosis here, though. you got to be careful. Don't just call it an iritis if they got photophobia. I made this mistake once when I was locoming in Hay River, and we called the optometry on call in, in Yellowknife. We said, we've got a patient here. They've got an iritis because they, they're wearing sunglasses. they got photophobia, slam dunk, and they asked me one question on the phone. What did the fluorescene show? What did the fluorescein staining show? And I was like, well, she got photophobia. Like, her iris is moving, it hurts. Why would I do fluorescein? If you look at the Edinburgh Eye Algorithm, great bedside tool, Edinburgh Eye Algorithm, the very first thing on that algorithm is fluorescein staining. And when we did the fluorescein staining, she had punctate epithelial erosions in her cornea. She actually had a keratitis causing her symptoms. So it's something in the middle of the eye that's causing those symptoms. Not pink eye, don't just say you're going to be fine, don't just give antibiotics, don't send them home. What if we did the fluorescein and we saw a little chunk of something in that eye? We saw some metal. 105 Topics says you must evert the lids. 105 Topics says you must ask about metal work. And so hopefully you can see that really easily with fluorescein staining. And then if you see a chunk of metal, well maybe you anesthetize the eye and go right ahead and try and remove it with a cotton swab. Go ahead and try and remove it with a cotton swab. Uh, cotton swab, please. I'm, notice I'm being super clear here. I said cotton swab, not a silver nitrate stick. There's a difference between silver nitrate sticks and cotton swabs. And you think it's apparent, but when they're in the same container in the eye room and you're looking through the slit lamp and you reach back, you don't want to be the doc who does this to a patient with silver nitrate. There is a difference between silver nitrate and cotton swab, so make sure we don't make that mistake. Patient number six from our catering staff got pink eye. Oh, he's also got diarrhea too. Phenomenal. So he comes into your Sioux clinic. He could have inflammatory bowel disease. Thinking outside the eye, thinking outside the bowel, thinking outside the joints. Maybe there's an extra articular or extra intestinal situation going on. Patient seven comes in and they say, you know, my eye's fine, but I just, I take eye steroids all the time. My ophthalmologist prescribes them, just need a refill. Do you refill their eye steroids? No, never, 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 never. Please, 
never prescribe eye steroids. These are outside of the scope of practice for primary care. And I'm begging you, do not do this. Not only can you worsen herpes virus, you can cause cataracts long term, you can cause corneal ulcerations, you can cause globe rupture. And within two weeks of giving eye steroids, daily eye steroids, the intraocular pressure can go up to the point where they get acute angle closure glaucoma because of your eye steroids and they can go blind. So I know some of you work rurally and you need to initiate some steroids. I would only do that if you're going to check their pressure or ideally better still, you've got opto follow-up within the next few days so that they don't go blind from your eye steroids. Don't refill eye steroids. Patient number eight, he comes in, he says, you know, I got pus coming out of my eye, I got pus coming out of my penis, and my baby's got purulent eye discharge too. You know what you say? You say, sorry, one problem per visit on this, Sue. Um, no, you don't say that. One patient per visit. Oh my goodness. No, it's all related. It's all connected. This newborn child has got ophthalmica neonatorum. You've got to figure out why. Is it staph or is it something more serious like chlamydia or gonorrhea? Now, for those little ones, they don't just give the erythromycin eye ointment anymore. The Canadian Pediatric Society says we don't do that routinely. Resistance is too high. Side effects are too high. Most people are low risk. And if we diagnose this, they need more than just eye drops. They need oral or IV or intramuscular treatment. Patient number nine. This is a guy who I actually saw as a patient of mine when I was working on my locum on Pender Island, rural BC, second last patient, all packed up, ready to hit the ferry and go home. And he came in and he said, yeah, it's, I got pain on my temple right here. Older guy uh, in his 60s. He's like, my shoulders are a little bit sore too. And uh, you know, every time I'm chewing, my jaw starts to ache too, doctor. And I'm thinking like, is Paul trying to prank me? Like, did he send somebody in with like a script? Because this guy sounded like an OSCE patient. He had every single symptom of temporal arteritis, which we now call giant cell arteritis. Exactly. And then he, he was talking and I was trying to get the rest of his history. He's like, oh, 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 my wife said I should probably mention I haven't been able to see out of this eye since Wednesday. I was like, okay, so why did you wait till Friday, first of all? Like, what is going on? And secondly, like, ah! So trying to, to like, realizing this guy's got serious eye disease, even with steroids, a huge percentage of people do lose vision in this eye. So I called an ophthalmologist, and no answer, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what do I do for this guy? Recalled the ophthalmologist. Called the ophthalmologist again. <laughs> I don't think the ophthalmologist has called me back yet. Still waiting. Check. Nope. This is like six years ago. So I called a local internal medicine physician in Victoria, the on-call internist, who's so nice and so helpful and totally understood. Oh, yes, rural doc needs some help. I'll give you all the advice you need. He said, this guy needs steroids yesterday. And so, okay, we, are, we got some prednisone pills. I'll get him some prednisone now. He's like, no, 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 no. If he's got visual involvement, it needs to be IV steroids. Get it in the IV. And I had to explain, I was like, well, you know, like, actually, um, I'm not in the city. I'm, I'm working in a very rural location. This is like a community location. We don't have a hospital, just a health center. We don't have nurses. We don't have anyone here to start the IV. Except for me, I guess. Like, I, I guess I could, I'll have to do that. Okay. Uh, uh, so I got the IV in, you know, I got the IV in, and mopped up the blood and pushed the steroids in. Made it in, and then the interesting thing, though, is, is that doc said some, something to me over the phone, like snowflake mnemonic, safety first. He said, make sure that you get somebody else to drive him to come to Victoria to see me. Why? He said, I don't want him driving down the Malahat Highway coming at me when the vision goes out in his other eye. Safety first. IV steroids if there's visual involvement for giant cell arteritis. Usually these folks don't have pink eye, but it's a damn good story, so we put it in here. You've got three minutes left in your sue for your patient with eye disease. How do we prevent these things? Goggles and condoms. Goggles and condoms. It's like a Fort McMurray house party. Bring your goggles and condoms. <laughs> you can make sure that you reduce risk of eye foreign bodies if they wear goggles at work. Reduce risk of urethritis and conjunctival, uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea if you wear condoms, and wash your hands lots to prevent viral conjunctivitis. And please, if you only remember one slide, you only remember one thing about pink eye, if your pink eye patient says, my eye hurts, that's a huge red flag, please refer that patient. If they say, I can't see in this eye all of a sudden, the vision's blurry, it's gone down, 
their acuity is worse than 20 over 30, that's a big red flag. Please refer that patient. And if they, you notice that one pupil is small and one pupil is big, the pupil sizes are different. There's a problem with the iris. There could be acute angle closure glaucoma. It doesn't even matter. You don't have to make the diagnosis. Pink eye, anisocoria, huge red flag.